I guess we didn't make it through unscathed. No. We're having some problems here with the fuel system. I'm Mike, I'm Joe, and this is Cart Life TV. What's up guys, welcome back to Cart Life TV. We're here in the driveway and we're gonna be working on the DS today. We took it off-roading the other day and unfortunately we had some issues with the fuel system. Not ideal, however, we're gonna fix it today and while we're at it, we're gonna give it an oil change and a spark plug change, check the filters, and then we'll be on the road. All right, so we're getting to work on the uh, on the fuel system here. We uh, we just took the seat off the golf cart, checked out the fuel tank, and take a look at this. This is disgusting. There's all kinds of uh, clumps of dirt, pieces of plastic, 16 years worth of crap in the fuel tank. And I I'm, I think I'm more convinced now of actually what's what's going on with uh, with the fuel system. What do you think? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Gr definitely gross. Um, so we're gonna, uh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna drain it. We got a, we got a gas can here. We're gonna drain the gas into, uh, into a gas can, try our best to clean out the fuel tank. Then we're gonna do the lines and the filters and make sure we're good to go. So let's get to work on that. Pro tip, when you're working with gasoline, be as safe as possible. The fumes are probably more explosive than the, than the gas itself. Um, so you wanna be extremely careful when you're using it. Make sure you use gas cans. All right, good news guys. We uh, were able to drain the entire fuel tank and we got all of the sediment and all of the crap out of the bottom of the tank. Um, Joe, he used the siphon and we used that as a vacuum cleaner to actually get all of the crap out. It just kind of sucked it all up. There's like two or three little pieces of plastic in there. I'm gonna get them out with uh, this old antenna I have. I'm just gonna try and fix them out. One of them is the, uh, the hole saw cut out from when I installed the gas gauge. Another is just a piece of a broken seal from the gas cap probably years and years ago. It's just kind of been sitting in there. I'm gonna get those out. Joe's doing a great job. He's just kind of doing some cleanup on the uh, tank. And then we're gonna start uh, doing the fuel system, get the filters changed and the, uh, the fuel lines. That just keeps the end from getting flat, so it doesn't pinch it shut. Make sure you cut that the length too, you don't want to get tied up in your clutch. All right, so we have the old fuel filter here and you can see kind of on the camera, there's a ton of crud in there that um, that we think was blocking the, the fuel coming through the system to the carburetor. And that's what was giving us the issues when we were trying to drive home the other day. Um, we got a brand new fuel filter. We're gonna put that on right now. Joe's just kind of prepping the area. And uh, then I think we'll be, uh, we'll be good. We're gonna check the rest of the lines, but so far, no other blockages. All right, we got the fuel system done. Everything's cleaned out. All the old gas is out of the system. New fuel filters, we checked the fuel lines. Uh, we changed the breather hose also. Got a brand new one of those on. Now we're gonna do the air filter. Super simple installation. Um, most of these parts come in the tune-up kit also, so it's like a one-time purchase. You can do everything all at once. For the air filter, you remove the old one by undoing the two clips on the side of the air box. You remove the hose clamp that holds the hose that goes from the air box to the carburetor. Slide out the old air filter, and then you slide the new one in, reverse the process, and you're done. We got that done. Now we're gonna move on to the spark plug. All right, time to change the spark plug. Again, super easy. Remove the spark plug wire from the uh, top of the motor. It's 
little black thing. It's got a, uh, kind of got like a grab tab on the top of it. You just want to grab that, pull it back, then you're going to take your spark plug socket and remove the old spark plug. Typically these are gapped correctly from the factory, so we just take the, uh, take the new spark plug, turn it in until it's snug. Do not over tighten the spark plug. Once you get the spark plug in, reconnect the wire, and that part of the job is done. Super easy. All right, we got the air filter changed, we got the spark plug changed, and we got the fuel system all set. The last thing we have to do today for this quick tune-up is change the oil. We've run this cart a lot in the last several months. Haven't changed the oil in a little while, so we're gonna make sure we do that today. All right, guys, so this is an oil patch pan. You just wanna make sure everything's tight on here. You get this at the auto parts store. It makes changing oil super easy, and I'm gonna show you why when we're done with this. Um, under the golf cart now, on the Kawasaki FD290 motor, this, um, the, uh, the plug here is a 14 millimeter, which is super random, but that's okay. Um, what you do is you, you break it loose and then you can reach up here so you don't get oil on your hands. And you just undo the plug and uh, there it comes. It actually doesn't look, doesn't look terrible. It's still got some, uh, it's kind of got some translucency in it. I thought this stuff was gonna be black sludge, especially after uh, all the driving we've been doing lately. And, beating this thing up but um pretty easy what i kind of do is i take the plug and i, I kind of put it to the side here um you let the oil drain out when that's done we're going to uh take the filter off it's right up right up here on the side put the new filter on and uh and fill it up so let's let this drain filter is simple you basically just stick your hand in here and you grab the old filter you give it a turn uh, I'm gonna shove a rag underneath it in case there's any drips so we don't get it uh, all over the place for no reason. But you just kind of unscrew it like this on the side of the motor. We did get a couple drips, but not much, and the rag there grabbed all of it. So there's, the, uh, there's the old oil filter, it's still filled with oil. Uh, I'm gonna put this over on the table. And we're gonna install a new oil filter, but before we do that, I'm just gonna take a little bit of oil from the pan. I'm gonna put it around on the seal here. Kind of helps uh, seat the filter and make sure that uh, you get no leaks. So, all right, so we got a little bit of oil on the, uh, the filter there. Put it back on. And with these, you don't wanna over tighten them either. It just makes it harder to get them off later on. But you kind of just do it until you feel like it's nice and snug that the, uh, the gasket in there and the oil will create a seal and you won't have any leaks that's that not a drop of oil anywhere and we got a very very slow drip of oil which means that we're basically drained out um, I'm just gonna give this a wipe get any kind of extra residue off and I'm going to uh, put the plug back in I checked it there's no metal shavings or anything uh, of concern reach up here get it in get it like hand tight like that drip stop take a rag clean up any kind of oil residue you might have on there from from the filter or from pulling the plug you can uh, close up the, uh, the air holes on this awesome I'm gonna show you this when we get out from under the golf cart. slide that out of the way got no oil drips anywhere give this a nice nice just tighten nice there's probably a torque spec on it but who torque specs the plug on the oil can nobody I know that's just ridiculous um, but that's it um, we're ready to fill it up with oil now let's go back up Mobile One, 10W30, full synthetic. Same stuff I put in my Corvette. It's good enough for an LS1. It's good enough for the Kawasaki FE290. So we just pour that straight in. It's 
funny when you have a funnel in there, you don't even need it. You can just kind of, looks like it goes right in. Right? One thing I take pride in when doing an oil change is not dripping anywhere. <laughs> Nearly impossible. Let me just show you guys this. These are available at uh, the auto parts stores. I don't like giving a wipe real quick. This is an oil change pen. It is awesome. It's um, basically you put it underneath your vehicle when you're changing the oil. Pull the plug, the oil drips into the top here. It's like a pan, it collects it, there's a drain hole, so it drains it down in here. And it basically turns it into a jug. So you can take this with you wherever you want to go and it disposes your oil. I'm not gonna tell you what to do with it. I'm not gonna tell you what we do with it. But there are places to properly dispose of it. All right guys, so that wraps up our service for today on the DS. We changed our fuel filters and checked the fuel system, cleaned out the fuel tank and changed the breather hose. We did our spark plug, our air filter, and we did an oil change on this golf cart. Remember, 10W30. If you want to do service on this golf cart, you can get the whole kit for about 20, 25 bucks. Some of them even include the carburetor. I'll put the link below to the Amazon kit that I purchased to, to do this service on the DS. We're going to gas this thing up now and get ready for our trip to Lox Hatches. It's coming up next. All right, so we went to gas this uh, this cart up. We just went and picked up five fresh gallons because the tank is super clean now. Wanted fresh fuel in it. Hooked it up and um, nothing happened. So if you look down here, what we got going on is we patched in a uh, temporary fuel pump that I had in inventory, thankfully, because you never know what's gonna happen with these old carts. Um, put a couple pumps on the gas and boom, fuel in the system. So we know what's wrong. We got a bad fuel pump here. This thing definitely went bad. See, it's there, there it is. That's the old fuel pump. We're gonna remove that real quick. It's simple. But um, what happened was, when we stirred up the gas tank in our off-road adventure, we, um, we probably damaged the fuel pump and got it clogged. So super easy to change again, just like everything else on these carts. It's a 7 16th socket. Um, the bolt is turning. Um, actually, with this thing here, with these fuel pumps, you gotta make sure you have tension on the, the nut. Otherwise, it won't turn out because the uh, it's, th it's through bolted and you can't get to the other side because of the body here. Um, sometimes you have to sneak a wrench or pliers under there to hold the back. Um, one thing you could do is just kind of hold the fuel filter up against the nut and it'll 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 turn out. So we got this uh, old one coming off and um, we're gonna put the new one on. We're gonna have to reroute some lines and stuff. Yep. But um, All right. sad to see the nut here and we're gonna. Boom, so there it is. There's the old, uh, there's the old fuel pump. I guess we could take it apart and service it. It's got four like security torque bits on it, but we're not gonna, they're so cheap that it's not worth the time. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna toss that. We're going to um, install this, uh, this plastic one in its place. What we are gonna have to do, hopefully these line up and it looks like, uh, looks like they do, they line up, but we are gonna have to reroute this one with some new fuel, Fuel, uh, fuel line because it's yep. just a different orientation okay. on the uh, on the fuel pump. There we go, and that's it. All right, so um, so that's it. Changed the fuel pump, extended the line so we have a little bit more slack in it because um, it was too tight with the old one, wouldn't fit. But um, I think we're good now. That was the issue, bad fuel pump, new new fuel filter, new fuel pump, new line, new breather hose, new gas, clean gas tank, I think we're ready to roll. All right. All right, hit it. Let's give it a test run. Let's go get some gators. All right, guys, so that wraps up our service video. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to Cart Life TV. And if you want to support the channel, visit lowspeedliving.com. We got some great stuff on there. We got one of these hats left. This neon hat Joe's wearing, one left. If you want it, pick it up, lowspeedliving.com. Support the channel. And we'll see you guys next time. We're about to uh, get ready to head off to Loxahatchee. Get some gators. Let's do it. Peace. Peace.